Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I have updates for you guys. I want to show you some interesting orchids and also do a follow up on some recent projects. And by that I mean whatever happened to the orchid seeds that I got from the Netherlands? Well, we're gonna find out today. Can we just take a guess? What do you think happened to those seeds? Because if you're thinking, oh, when orchid sprouted, Spoilers, nope, that's not what happened. I'm gonna show you. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it. And why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week and it's free, but if you're feeling extra about it and if you'd like to further support my channel, do consider becoming a member, checking out the affiliate links down below, checking out the merch or using the super thanks option down below my video. Righty, so that said, should we start with the seeds? We're gonna come back to this one. Let's start with the seeds. All right, so for those of you who are newer to my channel and you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link you to the video down below. Basically, I took a trip to the Netherlands and in Amsterdam, I found orchid seeds for sale at the flower market. And while I thought this cannot be real, I also thought, well, might as well give it a go. I'm always here for standing corrected. So I sewed them. This is what sprouted. <laughs> Do you see any stem, any leaf, anything green? No, I am shocked, I tell you. No, I'm not. Uh, because you see, in my opinion, orchid seeds have been a scam that's been around for ages, since the beginning of time. And by that, I mean the beginning of me being on YouTube. It first started on eBay, but now everybody's selling monkey face seeds, Phalaenopsis seeds. And apparently also people at the flower shop in Amsterdam sell fake orchid seeds. The thing is, orchid seeds are really different from most other plants. They don't have that solid outer shell, which I'm not gonna go into the terminology of because I don't really know it, uh, but they are very defenseless. And if just sown on soil or sphagnum moss or whatever, they will most likely be attacked by fungi and nothing will sprout. There is a process to sow them. It implies sterile conditions and a nutritious medium. Not gonna go into all of the details. If you're interested, you can research it yourself. But basically, orchid seeds that look like this, they're a scam in my opinion. I don't think there is any orchid seed that resembles that any orchid seed that we can grow, that is. And I would encourage you all not to purchase them because I do believe it will be a waste of money. And even if something sprouts like basil, no, you're purchasing orchid seeds. You should receive orchid seeds. And by purchasing these seeds, we're just gonna further support this activity. And yeah, I don't like to support that, even though I guess I just did by purchasing these. But I thought, well, at least I can make a nice educational video out of it. If anything happens, I'm gonna make a short or a post or something, but yeah, I wouldn't hold my breath on this thing. And speaking about orchid seeds, these are actual real orchid seed pots. These are my Tulumnia orchids. And I did mention in a previous video that I wanna try and cross hybridize them and try to sow the seeds. I don't know if I will succeed, but I do wanna try it. It is the first time where I think I can actually do it because not only did I manage to obtain the seed pods and they're viable, hopefully they're not sterile. Anyway, I also managed to find orchid medium. It's an agar based medium. I found it on eBay. So I hope it works. I hope it's good. I also purchased a box to make myself a glove box where I can keep things sterile while I sow the seeds. So I have been preparing. It's been almost two months since I pollinated the flowers. I filmed everything. If things are successful, I will definitely <laughs> publish the video. And according to the American Orchid Society, the seeds should be viable after 65 days since pollination. It's been almost two months or so. I have it noted on the calendar. Soon enough, I can actually remove the seed pot. I can leave it on longer as well, but then I risk the chance of it opening and losing some of the seeds. I also need to sterilize the seeds separately afterwards, whereas if I try to propagate with green pods, I only need to sterilize the pod. I don't know if I'm gonna try both methods, but I'm kind of running out of time. I need to make the agar medium and have my jars, my flasks ready. I have jars already, I just need to do the process. And soon I am going to be sowing some seeds, hopefully. So I really hope the process works. Here's where I'm at with the pollination and the seed pods. It's going well so far. 
but we'll see how I do from here on. Fingers crossed. If not, we can always try again because Tulumnias are very fast growers and theoretically they should be faster growing than other orchids as well. So very exciting, but I hope it works out. Alrighty, let's address this orchid now because I'm very excited about it. I purchased it as a no ID. I never saw it in flower and I don't know about you guys, but I like surprises. I like mystery boxes, let's say. Not really. I don't know if I ever purchased a mystery box because none have been available in my area. But anyway, I like that surprise of having an orchid bloom for the first time. My goodness, I was about to do something silly. So having it open for the first time without me knowing what it is. And this one, I do believe it's a speciosa hybrid because of the lip. It has a very fuzzy lip. However, the other parent, I cannot tell for the life of me. I've been Googling Speciosa hybrids and none look similar to the flowers of this one. Fragrance wise, it doesn't really help me because it kind of smells slightly fruity, pretty much like any other polykylus type of an orchid, maybe even like the Speciosa. And if you know Speciosas, you know they don't have very distinct fragrances. It's kind of nothing to write home about. It's the same with this one. I might detect a slight, slight sweetness to it, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it has some Gigantia, or maybe it's a cross between a Gigantia hybrid and the Speciosa. I don't know. If you have any idea, let me know, and I will research it further. But preliminary research has returned no results. I have no idea what this is, but I'm excited. It's very, very, very pretty. And other than that, yeah, I don't think it's crossed with a Phalaenopsis subgenus. Everything looks like Polykylus. So I'm pretty sure it's not a very complex hybrid, but I'm really curious to know what it is because I think it's darling. Another orchid which I find beautiful, I've never seen it in bloom until now, is this one, but we have a tag. This is Phalaenopsis gigantia crossed with Princess Kailani. And it looks like a gigantia, but more red, orange. It has absolutely stunning flowers, but the reason I wanted to show you this orchid is not necessarily the flowers, although they are really beautiful, kind of typical polykylus flowers to be honest, but I wanted to show you the foliage of this orchid. Look at this. I know some of you are already thinking virus. I don't think so. Now, this orchid sadly arrived to me with spider mites. I know, I haven't seen spider mites in a long while because I'm pretty good with keeping them at bay with my oily solutions, but this one arrived with some infestation. So some of the grazing, I do believe, got infected. And what we're seeing here is actually probably a fungal infection, which is not advancing. The orchid actually is pretty okay, looking like this for a while. And we don't see this pattern on all of the leaves. And I did encounter this pattern with other orchids. So that's why I'm saying, I don't think it's a virus. It does not behave like it's a virus orchid. Am I 100% sure? No. Without a test, I cannot say. I don't have a test. So if you ever see something like this and you do have a test, yeah, test it. But I would also suggest you don't really freak out because usually a virus shows on all of the leaves, that's one, and this is not a very young leaf. It's already mature, it's not like it just sprouted. The orchid was a little bit sit back, yes, but due to very different reasons that had to do with roots. But it is growing pretty vigorously and it's also recouping from what it was suffering. So usually virus orchids are really slow growing. They are also pretty frail. So yeah, from time to time I do get some questions regarding viruses. I can never be 100% sure if I don't test. But based on my experience, I personally am willing to take the risk with this one. Also, viruses are not really that easily transmittable if you're careful with your tools. So I'm not really worried about this one. And I think the following leaves will look good and the flowers are just gorgeous. But yeah, I wanted to showcase how spotting due to secondary infections, particularly with grazing insects, can look like something very scary, but they're actually not. Next up, a little unplanned update, but you know what? I want to show you this guy as well. This is the Oncidium Tiny Twinkle, which we repotted not too long ago, just a couple of weeks ago on camera. If you missed that video, check it down below. It's one of my least favorite orchids to repot because it produces a ton of roots 
and it just takes forever to repot. And in that video, I showed you how many roots actually removed. And I was telling you, listen, I know what's gonna happen. If you're not sure, don't do what a random person on the internet like me does. But I, I know, I know how to go about these things. And I just wanted to show you how he's looking today. He's looking good, I don't see wrinkles. And this is because the few roots that I left on, which was about a quarter of the entire root system, are good roots and they're doing a great job maintaining this orchid hydrated. I also see that the new growths are growing just fine. They are not stuck or anything or stunted. Anyway, things are looking great. And furthermore, what contributes to this is the potting mix and also the setup, which by the way, I just watered, but I did not water it up until now. So from then, a few weeks ago, up until now, I didn't have to water it. Today was the first day. So because I'm using sphagnum moss and the roots were constantly moist, which this orchid actually prefers, the orchid did not dehydrate quite at all. So I don't expect to have much of a setback. I'm hoping none at all, uh, but yeah, this is how it looks like. I think it looks absolutely great. And if I would manage not to drop things because I almost dropped it earlier, they would even be a lot more stable in their pot. But anyway, I'm hoping that maybe in the autumn, if not next spring, I'm gonna have another beautiful show from the Sorkhead. I don't expect to have much setback because if this year it made such a beautiful efflorescence, can you imagine when it grows a little bit more? The more growths we have on this orchid, the better the bloom show. I cannot wait. And I do believe the self-watering um, system will work great for me with these orchids. And just a little side note, just because I use sphagnum moss or self-watering doesn't mean you should either. This is an adaptation to my environment. It's how I can keep very thirsty oncidiums happy, but definitely you can grow these guys even in small grade bark. They're epiphytic. They're not very different from most other orchids we grow. It's just a matter of environment and trying to maintain them hydrated. They like a lot of water. They are not as tall tolerant, let's say, I mean, they are tolerant to drought, but they will not look as good. I mean, these pseudobulbs will become wrinkled and yeah, it's just not gonna look good. Even if they're tolerant, they show it more than other orchids. They show the distress. So I don't want him to get distressed. I need to keep him wet. This is what works for me, but use whatever works for you with your epiphytic orchids. Just don't miss watering day. It's not gonna like it much. You don't have to go to the length that I did unless you are struggling and it's very hot in your environment and it's very dry and you just cannot keep up with the watering needs. If that's you, consider the setup. I think you're gonna like it. And the last orchid we are looking at is this wonderful Phalaenopsis. This is a newer Phalaenopsis to my collection. It is the rain gold crossed with palins. I did not get a chance to repot it just yet. I should have, but it did something that made me postpone my repottings. And this is the crown got damaged very early on after I purchased it. I noticed the crown or the leaf in the crown started to just dry. Now, I don't think it is crown rot because the infection doesn't seem to go further down, but definitely the crown is very affected because the orchid decided to put out a cakey. Now, is this a basil cakey or a spike cakey? Because it's not at the base and it's not on the flower spike. Well, let's just call it a stem cakey, right? It is actually not the crown. Sometimes when the top of an orchid, when the crown is affected, new leaves will find their way out to the side of the orchid. This is not what's happening here because I can clearly see a stem growing from the initial stem. It is actually a cakey, but it is positioned very high up on the plant. I don't know if the roots that I'm seeing are the cakey roots or the orchid's roots. I think they're the orchid's roots. But being that the crown is affected by something, the orchid decided to put out a cakey. And in the end, I do believe what will happen is that I will remove the cakey when it has roots of its own and I'll just pot it separately. And the mother plant will slowly and surely wither off because it does not have a growth point anymore, it could start to put out some more cakeys, which is fine, but because the mother plant right now will not grow, will not continue, 
I didn't want to repot it in a waste materials. Sphagnum moss is not easy to find for me. And it's also costly because if I find it, I usually order it online. It, it's not local. I do not find the brand that I like local. So I said, okay, I'm not gonna waste sphagnum moss because who knows how long the mother plant will hold on. But I will make sure that it is healthy and it is hydrated so that it grows the keiki. And when the time is right, I will remove the keiki. But I hope you can see how surprising it is that it created so many blooms. Well, Phalaenopsis are like that. Just because they have a ton of blooms doesn't mean they're 100% happy and healthy. They can have ailments. Now, is this orchid in danger of like rotting? No. And it also has all of its leaves absolutely fine. They're performing okay. It has a ton of roots. So yeah, it can definitely sustain this amount of flowers. But is it 100% healthy? No. So flowers are definitely not an indication of health and definitely not an indication that your orchid will continue to thrive. The mother plant, it's not gonna hang around for long. The future is with the keikis. But yeah, never go by the flowers. Always, always check and inspect the crowns in between the leaves, the foliage, the roots, all of these other things when you're purchasing orchids. If you wanna purchase a healthy orchid, not the flowers. This, like, if you don't see what's happening here, you're gonna look at it and say, oh my goodness, this orchid is bursting of health. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, no. And if you don't know what to do about this, you might even lose the orchid. Because if we chop off this keiki when it's not ready, you're gonna lose the keiki. And will the mother plant make another keiki? I don't know, maybe yes, maybe no. How are you gonna go about it? It's a little tricky. So be careful what you buy. Luckily for us, we know how to handle the situation. I will take you along in a video when the time is right. And we're gonna repot the keiki separately and save the orchid through its keiki. Alrighty guys, so these were the updates for today. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today. Let me know about this orchid if you know anything, because I'm really curious. And with that said, thank you for joining me. Hope you have a wonderful day. Subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos. With that said, I'll see you next time. Bye.